Um, let's keep being in the habit of here of asterisking the carbonyl carbon and oxygen, because it's easy to lose track of those. For example, it's very easy to forget in this picture that this is the oxygen that used to be the carbonyl oxygen, because it doesn't look like a carbonyl oxygen anymore. Uh, and the important thing to keep in mind here is remember, when we attacked aldehydes and ketones, very often the carbonyl oxygen got completely kicked off. When we attacked aldehydes and ketones, in these two categories, the carbonyl oxygen got completely kicked off. But that's not going to happen in these reactions, uh, at least not in the simple cases. In these reactions, the carbonyl oxygen will not be completely kicked off um, because we want to reform the carbonyl. Instead, we're going to kick the L group off. So it helps to keep asterisking the carbon uh, that used to be the carbonyl carbon and the oxygen that used to be the carbonyl oxygen, so we know what we need to reform over here. Also, it's easy to lose track of who the L group is. When you look at this, it's obvious that this is the L group. But when you look at something tetrahedral like this, it can be confusing who the L group is. You need to have identified in your mind ahead of time who the L group was going to be, so we know who's going to leave at this step. All right, the other complication is, again, even though there's only two steps, that means that there's three places where we can have protonations or deprotonations. Sometimes we need to protonate ahead of time to get things into good position. Then we might need to do a deprotonation um, after this step. And then we might need to do another protonation before this step and another deprotonation. So there could be protonations and deprotonations before and after the steps. And we should just go through the details of that. So, all right, so we should stop talking in generalities here and do some examples. So let's take a look at this acyl halide. And uh, let's say we've got uh, over here. So let's try to go through the mechanism of the reaction that would happen between these two substances. Let's see if we can write that out. Well, we can identify that up front. Yeah, remember that X stands for any halogen. Oh. X is the general symbol in organic chemistry yeah, for any exactly. halogen. So this could be any halogen over here. Um, and uh, yeah, we have identified that this is an acyl halide and the X is probably going to be our leading group. So first of all, we're going to attack like this. We know this is a, a, an OK nucleophile here, this alcohol. Um, so that would give us uh, this product. OK. Uh, and now we should ask if there's any need for any uh, deprotonations or proton transfers. Was there anyone here who needs to lose a proton? Clearly, this needs to lose a proton to get rid of its charge. We don't want to leave this charge over here. Uh, but there's nobody here who really needs to gain a proton in this case. Uh, there's nobody to really transfer this proton to. Uh, there's no one who really needs to gain a proton. Maybe that's why it's a good idea to do the deprotonation last, because that gives us a somewhat handy to do the deprotonation here. Now we have this handy leading group to do the deprotonation. Okay, so this is just one example of our uh, general pattern uh, over here, uh, where we've uh, done this. And now, um, what type of functional group did we start with here? This was our acyl halide, right? And what type of functional group did we produce? Ester. An ester. Mm -hmm. So this shows the idea of the wild card idea, where we've taken this L group and replaced it with a different L group over here. We've taken one L group and replaced it with a different L group, which is the way most of these reactions work. So this is an acyl halide going in ester, which I think right. we did. Are there specific conditions for any of them? Well, would this reaction be hard or easy? 
This is a very easy reaction because we're starting with the most reactive uh, 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 carboxylic acid over here. So you're saying it's good for them? Um, so this is an easy reaction where we don't really need any special conditions. That's right. We don't need any catalyst, for one thing, for this. So that's something else we should mention. Um, is it easy to go up this table or down this table? Is it easy to turn this into this, or is it easier to take something up above and turn it into something down below? Which way is it? Yeah, above to below. That's what it meant when we said that we said we, these were the most reactive. When we said these were the most reactive, we meant these were the ones that were most easy to turn into the things down below them. Uh, remember that amides are the least reactive. That means it's the hard. These are the ones that it's hardest to start one of these reactions with. It's the hardest to start a reaction with an amide and try to build something uh, from up above. Uh, in fact, there's some exceptions, but usually you only go from up to down. Even though there's some exceptions, usually we just start from something above the table and we make it into something down below in the table. Well, the acyl halides are the most reactive of all, so we don't need any kind of special catalyst for this. That's one reason why there was fewer protonations and deprotonations for this reaction than for some of the other reactions we'll get to in a second. Some of the other reactions here need a catalyst because we're starting with a less reactive starting material. But this is so reactive that we don't need any special conditions or catalyst. Uh, we just dive right in and do the reaction. So what do we get when we have an alcohol um, plus an acyl halide? An ester. That gives us an ester. Um, now, you shouldn't have to memorize that because you should be able to figure it out just by working through the mechanism here. You should be able to see that an alcohol plus an acyl halide gives you an ester. Uh, but this is important if you're doing synthesis. If you're trying to do synthesis and the product has an ester, well, um, a good way to make an ester is to start with one of these two things and attack it with an alcohol. We can start with either of these two things above it and attack it with an alcohol, and we know we'll get an ester. That should be obvious, but a lot of students don't see that because this doesn't really look like an alcohol anymore because it's deprotonated. It's hard for people to remember this came from an alcohol because the hydrogen is gone, and now it doesn't look like that. So it's important to look at this. So one thing that's important, and we've seen this on many reactions so far, after a nucleophile attacks, it very often has to deprotonate to get rid of its positive charge. And then it doesn't quite look the same as it did at the beginning, so people forget where it came from. So this came from an alcohol because before it attacked, it had that extra proton. So our group came from an alcohol, even though it doesn't look like that alcohol anymore. But this is a pattern that's actually, um, this is actually one of the big stumbling blocks, I think, that people have. They don't realize that a good way to synthesize things is by attacking them with alcohols, because the O doesn't look like it came from an alcohol once it's deprotonated. Um, but an alcohol is just an O with an R and an H. Well, this is pretty much an alcohol that's just deprotonated. So that's important for doing synthesis. Okay, so this is our first uh, good example here of uh, moving down the table uh, with an attack.